All right. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are thrilled to bring to you some information about the very exciting opportunity to intern with Oshner Health in our information systems division. We are joined by an incredibly awesome team of panelists this morning from the industry itself and from human resources. And we're gonna go through and introduce everyone to you before we get started. So first I'm gonna start with our honor guest, Kevin Sims. Kevin is the AVP of clinical systems with NIS. And I asked him to clarify for me what exactly his role was. So when he gets around to it, I'll let him explain a little further. But he really oversees, as he described it, all the applications that interface with EPIC. And EPIC is our you know, health information management system. So Kevin, if you wanna do a better job of introducing yourself now, I'm sure the students would appreciate that. <laughs> sure, I think, thanks. Yeah, I hate to say all because there's so many applications that we have. I have a lot of them. Um, but because we have, you know, we have 700 people, more than 700 people in IS, we have, uh, I have 500 applications that are non-EPIC applications that, that integrate, but there's a lot of other applications that a lot of other folks do as well. So, um, but I help tie things together um, uh, quite often. I also have oversight of our project management office uh, and then our assets team, uh, who are the guys that, that do the ordering and the delivering of, of all of our equipment. So very excited to be here. Thank you for the introduction, Ashley. Yeah, absolutely. Just those few things, guys. Just a few little areas, 500 plus applications. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know we had that many partnerships. <laughs> Learning something new every day. Thank you, Kevin. We're also joined by the illustrious Inez Jordan here. Inez is a Regional Diversity and Inclusion Director with Oshner of our newly created Diversity and Inclusion team. So Inez, take a moment, introduce yourself to the group. Hi. Uh, yeah, my name is Inez Jordan and Kevin and Justice. I don't know if you know this about me, but I was a programming major, computer science major, industrial engineering school. And my first job was running help desk and programming. So I always get excited when I get to sit here and encourage people to come to do stuff with IS. Um, so yeah, I, I have had a, a very uh, interesting career here at Oshner. And so I can't wait to talk to you more about how do you get involved and get started. Thank you, Inez. Yeah, you guys, our panelists are awesome. Yesterday's event was so fruitful. You're gonna really enjoy it. Next, we're joined by the lady who oversees the program herself, Ms. Faye Campo. She is the manager within our talent management team who oversees this Catalyst internship program, as well as our fellowship program for graduated um, graduate students. So Faye, if you'll introduce yourself, Hi, everyone. I apologize. I uh, introduced myself early, but I'm Faye Campo uh, and really glad to be a part of today's um, uh, discussion about the opportunities here in our information services technology department. So uh, I manage the Catalyst uh, program, uh, which is an eight week uh, program. And so we're looking forward to sharing a couple of things with you all today uh, to get you excited about wanting uh, to come join Oxner. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Faye. Thank you. We're going to go to Ashley, my fellow namesake friend over here. Ashley is a senior recruiter in our talent acquisition team, which oversees all of our recruitment at Oshner. So if you'll introduce yourself, Ms. Ashley. Hello. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm happy to be here today, like everyone else. Um, been at Oshner and been recruiting here at Oshner with a passion for our corporate teams for the past eight years. And it's a great place to be, and I'm sure you'll hear that today. Oh yeah, absolutely. And last but certainly not least, we have Mr. Justice Arseri, and I had to practice his last name. You proud of me, Justice? <laughs> he is actually a past Catalyst intern within this division, and he now works with Oshner full-time as an IS technology specialist. So if you just want to say a little quick intro, Justice. Yeah, you did actually get the last name correct. This is Arseri. Um, like you said, I was an intern in 2018. Um, I believe it was the first year they did it here under our CPO. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited to art, you know, what, what that experience was like for me and hopefully um, excite everyone to uh, apply and get started. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. And if I haven't said it yet, I'm Ashley Stevens. I'm going to be moderating this event today. 
I support the Oshner Career Center, which is a central hub for where our current employees can spend time with a career coach, learn about their resume development, interviews, and find out about job opportunities. So we are all here today to tell you what about this opportunity makes sense for your career and some more details so you can make the right choice for yourself. I know we already have a ton of applicants and if you are one of those applicants, congratulations, you've already taken the next step. But if not, today's information session will be very helpful for you. A couple of quick rules, just so we know before we jump in. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see something that says Q&A. That Q&A is a place where you can drop your questions. We would prefer you put your questions in that bucket than in the chat, because that's where to help us organize who needs to answer what question, if we're gonna answer it live or if we'll type out an answer. And just for anyone who might have a, an interesting question that we need to think through or go do some research, we may tell you that we'll, we'll give you an email address to email that question and we'll follow up after. So if you have any regular comments or you just wanna say hi or tell us anything about yourself, all that can go in the chat, reserve your questions for the Q&A. We will have a Q&A section at the end of this little information. So we will answer questions that are put into that Q&A portal at the end of the event. And finally, I'm gonna let my panelists go a few minutes before the hour, and then I and Faye will stay on to continue answering questions if there's a ton of them so that we can relieve our panelists for helping us today. And with that said, let's get started. And Faye, I'm starting with you. You're at the source, you run this program, you're my favorite person to start with. Why don't you give us just a general overview of what exactly is the Catalyst Internship Program? Thank you, Ashley, and thank you so much for hosting us today. We appreciate it. Uh, the program basically has been um, set into place to provide the interns with direct mentorship. Uh, it gives them an opportunity to um, get to know the healthcare industry and opportunities throughout the organization. Uh, but it also gives them an opportunity to identify some important skills uh, that they can build upon uh, in, the, in the internship opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the beauty of an internship is it is the, the perfect marriage of educational learning experience and that firsthand professional, what they call real world experience. And what better place to do that than the largest employer in the state? Absolutely. <laughs> now, Faye, what are some of the, the practical benefits? And we'll go to Kevin probably after this for his perspective. But what are some of the benefits that a student could gain as an intern with Oshner? Absolutely. So, um, you know, we feel we have the best of the best mentors. So they, they as I mentioned earlier, they get one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentorship, uh, coaching opportunities. Uh, we have peer networking uh, in um, online and classroom uh, developmental uh, sessions that we provide. Um, um, I'm so sorry. Um, um, interns will have the opportunity to work on a one particular project throughout mm -hmm. and be able to present out to the department that they'll be assigned to. And that's just to name a few. There's so many opportunities that we continue to enhance the program with to give them a really enriched training and development um, internship. Yeah, absolutely. Um... And I know one very important piece as a benefit, Faye, is that this is a paid internship, right? It is, <laughs> absolutely, thank you. Yes, it is paid uh, and it is an eight week uh, program, 32 hours a week uh, with a graduation at the end as well too. All right, I can tell you when I was an intern in college, a paid internship was almost not a thing anywhere. I mean, so you guys are living in the best generation to get to be a paid intern at a nonprofit healthcare system for that matter. But we believe in the value you bring to the organization. Now, Kevin, I think some of the students would probably like to know a little bit about what would be some of the opportunities, some of the benefits. Just tell us a little bit about what a student could experience as an intern within the IS division at Osher. 
Sure. Yeah. So, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier, but we have over 700 team members um, and, you know, we're the largest IT employer in the state as well. We have a lot of opportunities. We do a lot of different things inside of IS at Oxner that is people don't normally think of as classic IT. So we do project management. Do we do process improvement? Do we do workflow analysis? Um, a lot of the people that work for us in IT don't even have a, a classical IT background. Uh, we have folks that have a wide variety of um, backgrounds and experiences that come to us because of the, the, the wide range of opportunities and things that we do. Um, we have 11 different teams uh, with 11 different types of roles that we are hiring for. Uh, and so we're very excited about uh, um, the candidates that we'll have um, and the exposure that these candidates will get to, to IS and healthcare. It's a big industry. Um, there are so many cool things that we do in IT and healthcare, so many problems that we're solving, so many things we're doing behind the scenes that we, we you know, it's, it's very rewarding for us because we are literally saving lives by changing the processes and giving our clinicians the tools that they need to be able to uh, perform better and to treat their patients better. So um, the opportunities that, that we will be offering to our candidates, I think, are, um, are, are astounding. I think the, the candidates that, that get accepted, and this is not to sound um, uh, uh, braggadocious, but I think they would be very lucky to get an internship in, in IT and all. I think you can brag, Kevin. It's okay. Maybe I can. Okay. Yeah. You would be very lucky to get an internship. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we, we don't have, um, you know, a vision statement of innovating healthcare for nothing. So I'm sure if we had enough time, we could reflect on all the different ways that your teams have innovated healthcare, even in the midst of this pandemic, ways that we've been able to better serve physicians and better serve patients better serve the employees who also use all of our technology and how to help help them help our patients and physicians. So yeah, we can brag a little bit. We're we're innovating healthcare here. And right, we are every day. Yeah. Every single day, you know, I think um you mentioned 11 different teams. I mean that's <laughs> so if I'm if I'm an IS intern applicant and I'm thinking I want to work in IS, but I don't know if I might be interested in front end or back end software, you know, can you tell us a little bit about more, what are some of those teams that are going to be hiring interns so that anyone who's interested can kind of get a sense of if it's right for them? Yeah. Um, so, you know, a lot of folks have heard about Epic. Epic is um, a very big electronic medical record um, software vendor that, that we use, a uh, big partner of ours. Uh, we're hiring for some of those teams. Uh, those are very like clinically focused. So if you think about um, the registration process, if you think about what happens if you're inside of the clinic and uh, you're seeing the providers and the nurses, the pharmacists, radiologists, the radi radiologist techs, like all of those uh, um, disciplines in the clinical world have a different solution that we deliver from Epic that allows them to do perform their job. And so each one of those, so those teams are hiring. Um, but we're also hiring a lot of the classical IT functions as well. So the technology specialists, uh, our folks that are, that are the hands-on, that are delivering the equipment, that are fixing the equipment, that are fixing your devices, uh, replacing your devices, making sure you have the right equipment in hand. Uh, we're hiring for that. We're hiring for our, um, our front desk, or I'm sorry, our, our service desk. So when mm -hmm. folks call in and they have an issue that they need, to, that they need our help with or they need uh, an enhancement to a solution that we have. Mm -hmm. We have uh, teams that that intake those as well. So um, it's it's really amazing. It is you know you, I don't think that there is um, if you have any if you have any interest in IT that there's not a team that we have hiring for that you won't uh, have an interest in. Right. I think you're absolutely right. Um, something you said really resonated with me. The team, the field team, the the service and support teams. I mean, I could say, raise your hand if you've used them like four times just in the last month, right? <laughs> this team is so critical to me performing my basic function in HR. <laughs> they're so important. And I know they're also all supporting everyone in the organization at every level. Um, but I love the variety of opportunities students could get depending on sort of where their interests lie. And I know at Ochsner, the great, beautiful thing about being such a big organization is that we are all connected really well. And if there's ever an area where 
you get into an internship, let's say, and the Epic team, and you're like, you know what, I think I want to get a little more techie and go on the back end a bit. We could just introduce you to the right people. So it's really the right first step to get into an industry, and by industry, I mean healthcare. That's one of the largest industries in the nation and have really a long career here in a number of ways, right? Yeah, I, I agree. There's, you know, there's, and, and I, there's so many things I forget sometimes. And so I was just kind of looking back at my notes and, and I recognize it. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't talk about our analytics division. You know, we right. have something that delivers reports and data. Um, you know, it, when when you hear about the number of people that are having um, COVID tests done or the number of people that are, that are getting their vaccines done, most of that data is coming from our analytics team and they're pulling it from um, IS to be able to deliver up to the state. So they're pretty you hear busy about right now. You don't know how that happens or where it comes from. That's what I, that's a lot of what IT does. You know, we're a, we're a service division. That's what we do. We provide service mm. to our customers. Um, those customers are our clinicians, are our HR partners, are our business partners that are out there. And that's what we do. Uh, so we are very service oriented and we're driven by our desire to ensure that we are giving good service and allowing um, our clinicians to provide that, that better care. It's really end user focused. And what I love about that is um, if you've ever called a technology company because your phone's not working or your TV's not working, let me tell you, this is a totally different caliber of service professionals, y'all. <laughs> this is the team to be on. Um, so yeah, thank you for adding analytics. We actually had someone who attended our webinar yesterday who asked specifically about data and analytics. And I hopefully she's here because I said, stay tuned. We're gonna talk a little bit about that tomorrow. Um, I think she was pursuing a master's in that field. And oh my goodness, is that team busy right now in the middle of COVID? Every, I'm, I would say every week, but probably every day that that team has to put out updated reports on every facility across the system, updates on COVID, you know, beds taken up, diagnoses, testing. I mean, everything, it's, it's um, that team has had their work cut out for them among all the teams truly here, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some some heroic efforts um, over the past year by everybody involved in, in healthcare. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think they got a specific shout out. The IS division specifically got a great shout out at our system leadership launch. Um, can't forget about you guys. Y'all make everything possible. Otherwise we're still faxing each other things, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Kevin, for all of that. Students, if you have questions specifically for Kevin, put them in the Q&A. He is our token technology specialist here. Uh, make sure you start to get those in because as we'll approach the end of the event here in probably just another 10 or so minutes, love to get your questions directed to him. Thank you, Kevin. Ashley, can I jump in? I'm so sorry. Can we have Kevin talk about, this is one of the questions. Can we ask Kevin uh, to kind of highlight some of the skills that he's looking for um, specific to the IS internship? Sure. sure. Yeah. Hi, Faith. Yeah, I did. I saw that that question. Looks like from from Ira, and Ira, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Um, you know, I think having the experience with things like Excel and Word and Outlook, um, your ability to to know how to to use those tools and communicate is important. I think it's probably important in in every field these days, mm -hmm. um, not just IT. Uh, you know, without without having the ability to to know how to function with those, you will struggle um, in a, in a professional environment. Um, but no, it's not, it's not required. We don't look for coders. Uh, we don't really do any coding. Um, our jobs are more around um, configuration of applications. So we will buy an application from a vendor. Um, and then that application will come with um, basically instructions for how to install it and configure it. But we don't do, um, you know, classic um, computer programming uh, for the most part. We have a small group that does a little bit of that, but um, it's it's certainly not the um, not the majority of of our individuals. So, uh, you know, good communication skills are are important. Um, good organization skills, um, self starter. Uh, so I'll tell you that you know we look for people that are hungry, humble, and passionate. Right. So we want people that that want to excel, are going to self start. Um, they're smart, um, and um, you know are able to to be successful really on their own with some guidance and input from, uh, from the people that are around them. Right, thank you, Kevin. I know Inez spoke to this yesterday, so she may say it again, but something about, you know, speak 
speaking up with your own voice and people who bring that passion, you know, right to the forefront. So this is a great transition, Inez, because what I really love for you to share with the students from your perspective is, you know, why Oshner? Why should someone feel really excited about the opportunity to be an intern at Oshner right now? And, and what's that unique experience going to look like for them? So, um, you know, I think I, I, I agree. We, you know, it is, you are lucky to get a, a, a position or internship with IES for sure. And, and most people say to me, I how in the world did you start off as a computer science and in, engineer and ended up in HR? And that's the beauty of Oshner. Really, that's the beauty of IES is the opportunity and the variety that you have um, to kind of really explore not only healthcare, but yourself. And um, I think that's critical. And as lucky as we are to have you, I just want um, people to remember, we have a lot to learn from you as well. And so when you come through the door, you help us as managers learn, how do we really kind of inspire you? How do we help you transform? How do we help you build on those skills that Kevin talked about that maybe you want a little bit more help on and you want to dig deeper mm -hmm. into? And the reality is, you know, as an intern, you also have access to all the stuff we offer like in the Learning Institute, which can help you with Excel and Outlook and project management and communication skills and how I'm on the help desk and someone's like really upset. How do I keep my calm and my center? I'm telling you, that's something that I learned early on with my first internship. And so you just have to come in, I think, eager to learn and knowing that Ashner is a place that is really appreciative and looking for diversity and inclusion. We want you to feel at home. We want you to show up as your true self. We want you to unleash your talent. And we are highly devoted to helping you do that. Yeah, absolutely, Inez. Thank you for sharing. You know, it's, it's something you said yesterday that resonated with me, I'm gonna bring back up, is that this opportunity at this organization in particular is really a safe space for you to make mistakes and for you to come in and bring all of your ideas and creative energy and you know throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. That's what internships are for. In an environment where people can guide you and share all their wisdom and best practices and you never know what, what idea you might bring to the table that might be implemented. I know our intern who shared with us yesterday, she came up with an idea to serve patients a little bit better on their day of surgery. And they are using her idea, at least in the facility that she was working in. And what a cool way to say that you have now changed a patient experience to be more positive on a day that could be really difficult for them. So just you're saying just, you would be lucky to work here. It's mutual, right? What do they say about relationships? It's not 50-50. It's 100-100. We want to give you all of our best, and we want you to bring all of your best. And I think that's a really special thing about working at Oshner right now is you aren't just going to go and do coffee runs for us. We can do that all on our own at our own homes. We're not interested in that. We're not, we don't care to pay you to do that. We have Uber Eats for that, right? <laughs> so I think what would be the most wonderful contribution now, now that you're back, Justice, sorry, you had some technical problems, which is really ironic that we're on the, the IS team's <laughs> info session. Why don't you share a little bit about your experience as a past Catalyst intern? Tell, tell them about your experience, maybe some projects you were able to work on. Um, I know they'd really appreciate hearing, hearing it firsthand. Yeah, absolutely. So I, in 2018, was interned with the asset department. Um, and really what it offered me was a chance to apply what I learned from the three years I was at school um, in the real world. And as Kevin mentioned earlier, the largest um, employer of IT in Louisiana, um, I was mentored by a senior level technician um, and under his wing, the things that I, the skills that I learned and what I was equipped with really propelled me into my IT career. Um, I even picked up a certification as a certified hardware asset manager professional or champ for short. Um, and so, yeah, it, it really gave me a whole lot in that way, but also as we've been talking about too, how vast IT is and how broad it is, how many avenues you can go down. It really gave me a lot of direction for what was passion for me to go into. And so that was uh, customer service, um, being in front of people, helping people. Um, and so I've been able to 
pursue that. Um, I have since transferred to, as you mentioned in the introduction, a field service technician. Um, and so just the direction I got from my time in the internship helped with me with deciding which way I wanted to go. Um, for projects, uh, like you asked me to answer, um, we had our Shreveport project, uh, which was quite the large one we had in a while. Um, it had over 1,400 computers and devices that we had to provision, configure, and deliver to Shreveport. Um, in my year of, from the internship and then full all the way next year to next summer, I actually provisioned over 3,000 devices. This includes um, configuring with the applications that we have, which each provision has a different challenge of a different doctor requires a different software um, or some of our business teams require some financial software. Um, so each one of those configurations was different and had different challenges. And on the team, like you said, um, also there's this uh, cooperation with other teams. So with analysts or engineers, I was able to um, get good time with them and learn from them as we applied their solutions to the challenges we were facing and configuring. And so, yeah, I learned a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Justice, tell us, I just I think it's a really fun anecdote. What were you doing right before this event, actually? <laughs> before this event? Oh, okay. So um, the office that I needed to get into was locked. Um, so I needed security. Are you talking about before Did you this? just help a physician right before oh, you yes, this yes, event yes. started? Before, before that. Okay. So yes, there was a hard drive that was uh, malfunctioning and actually not, not up to par for what the uh, executive needed. So I had to replace it. I actually got to communicate with the asset team who I used to intern for and get a new one. And then I had to go install that hard drive and make sure all of her data was safe. Right. <laughs> just a little peek into the real world of what his job now looks like, right? Yeah. He's collaborating with people to solve a problem immediately right before he jumps into this fun event. <laughs> so, <laughs> life and times of a field tech, right? Yes. So you talked about that provisioning of all of those assets. Holy moly, Justice, can I just virtual high five you right now? Because <laughs> that's incredible. Did you find, um, did you have to work with other people to kind of accomplish that? Did you get to learn a lot on the way? I mean, how did that project help you in getting this new position that you're in? What do you think was kind of the best transition there? Uh, definitely. So in just in that example of the Shreveport project, we had all those devices and they all had to be, like I mentioned, configured in, in special unique ways and it was all it, when new devices came in, when we were ready to upgrade to the newest model, we had to coordinate with our engineers to uh, make sure we had proper drivers for the new device and make sure that everything was up to par with uh, encryption on, because we are a hospital and we are a health system, we have patient information involved, um, so everything has to be secure. Um, so I got to coordinate with engineers, with leaders, project managers. And so I got to have kind of a taste of a bit of everything. Um, and so, like I mentioned earlier, that just propelled me to figure out exactly where I wanted to go and exactly what I needed to do to get there. Right. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing. And I think if I were someone on this webinar wondering what, how did he get the internship and what do I do to do the same thing? Do you have any advice for any incoming applicants who are thinking about what's the best thing to do on their application or, or when they get the internship, how to how to work, any advice? So I was very lucky, as Kevin mentioned, to get the internship, <laughs> uh, but I would give advice for anybody who does in fact have that same luck and get into it. Uh, to just apply yourself would be the first thing. Uh, I think primarily that's why I've ended up with a full-time position here is because I was able to apply myself. Um, like Inez said earlier, there's this uh, mutual um, tape that comes from the internship that um, there, there's a point of view that you have that's fresh and new, and there's already processes and systems in place, but with your new fresh set of eyes, you can help improve those processes and, you know, make a difference in your community through wherever you're located in the Oxford system, um, and absorb information like a sponge, is what I would say, because there's a lot of skills and a lot of knowledge. There. Absolutely. Great advice for us all, really. I think, um, I'll add to that and say, don't just absorb, go out and seek more information. 
Osher is a big system with a lot of resources. And as Inez mentioned, we have our own learning institute. So if there's just something you wanna work on, like public speaking skills, for example, which maybe you don't study a lot in computer skill, <laughs> but you never know when Ashley's gonna call you to be on a panel like this. That's an area where you could work on those skills. Um, and so anything you wanna learn, it's like having a tiny university in a, in a company, um, which, you know, is, is free and you're paid during the time that you're here. So take full advantage. Don't just wait for information to come and be a sponge. Go seek out what else you want to know and tell your leaders what you're interested in, the leaders that your mentors that you'd be working with, because they have all worked here much longer and know how to get you connected. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Justice. I so appreciate that. And I know that our, our participants appreciate that. Now, Ashley, I think it's time to turn to you as we start to wrap up here, thinking about what's the next step? How, how should someone apply? And I know I'm gonna pull up a slide to show here in a second. And then also what are some advice, some tips maybe for anyone looking at their resume right now or their application that you might say could help them stand out? Perfect. Um, so everything is posted on our website, and I know Ashley's going to pop up a little screen here, um, which you'll be able to take a picture of, and it'll take you right to the link. Um, applications are due February 21st, so there's plenty of time. Um, you know, I think sometimes uh, what people think of, you know, when when coming up to this uh, point and getting ready to apply is, what do I put on there? Maybe I don't have work experience quite yet. Um, I think a highlight that I like to to give people or or kind of point out is is explain some of the projects that you've done in school, list some of the things that you've done, really kind of sell yourself and and what you've done in school, what classes are you passionate about, what have you found in, in your passion in pursuing your education that you would like to highlight people um, such as on this call uh, that you feel like you can bring to the role. Um, and so we're happy to have you, um, you know, also in this internship, um, but also, you know, we have lots of opportunities outside of this internship as well to highlight in regards to part time and, and different types of positions as well. Yeah, absolutely, Ashley. It's worth mentioning that we have plenty of other full and part-time positions, not just the internship. So if you're a graduating senior, you can apply for the internship as a graduating senior, or if you're ready to just jump in and try to go for a full-time role, that's also open to you. We also have some other part-time roles, plenty that are in your industry, but also plenty that are in response to COVID. If you're looking to make a difference in your community, there are plenty of other opportunities to do that as well. Now, what I've pulled up here for you is a couple of different things. It's kind of a few listing of opportunities here. And Kevin did such a good job explaining more of the teams. So I just listed a few. And I've also put a QR code in the middle of the screen. And I probably don't have to explain this to you all because you're all in technology. But if you're interested in going straight to the application, if you haven't yet, you just pick up your smartphone and you open your photos, open your camera, hover over that code and a link should pop up for you to click on and it will take you right to the application page. The deadline to apply is February 21st, so still a little bit of time. And I put on the right hand side a couple of questions we got yesterday so that you can kind of understand and plan your summer that the internships will begin May 31st, like June 1st, but it's the Monday of, of the beginning first week of June through the end of July. And a little pro tip for anyone interested, you are always off on Fridays, including one full week off the week of July 5th. And we put some locations down there for some possible locations for these internships. If, um, you know, if you're interested in the field side of things and you would need to be in person, that would be relevant for you to consider. Now I'll leave this up for just a couple minutes. And I'm going to scooch over now to some questions that might have come through. And I know that you, some of you have been getting your questions answered as we go. Um, but there are a few remaining. So I think my first question here is going to actually be for Kevin. So Kevin, Tyler asked, does the internship allow for us to rotate through the 11 teams and to figure out which one's best for them? And are the teams on side or would they be remote? Uh, good question, Tyler. Um, so 
Probably no for the rotate through. And here's, here's kind of why. Um, it's a relatively short internship. It takes a good amount of time for any new team member to come into IS to kind of get their, to, to get going and to, and to start to understand what it is that they're being asked to do. Rotating through the 11 would not really give you an opportunity to really learn what, what that role is that you are, are in place for. Uh, just at the time that you would leave one, you would just barely have a bit of an understanding of what it is that you were supposed to be doing in that, in that original one. Uh, what I will say, though, is that any of these positions will give you some exposure to really all of the areas in IT. Uh, so you will have the opportunity to kind of see what's happening in others. So if for whatever reason, um, you are in an internship and you're like, no, I really don't love field tech services, um, but I really, really do love project management. You'll have that opportunity to see that uh, and, and get exposure to to uh, to all of those different areas. Right. No, that's a great point, Kevin. You know, an internship just a few months in length, you would never get to experience anything fully. And three months, even I would argue, barely gets you enough time to be able to see any area fully. You know, in HR, we talk about it takes at least a year for a new employee to like fully grasp their current role before they actually start doing much more in their role. And I think that's also a similar experience as an intern. So we want to give you a valuable experience. You know, we don't just want to, to show off all these different things that we've done. But to Kevin's point, certainly tons of opportunity to network and meet and explore. And if you have interests in learning more about a different area, there's nothing stopping you from being able to communicate with someone in those different areas asking your mentor, who could I get connected to, to learn more about this other area I'm seeing. All of that's certainly possible. So thank you for that. And I do think we've got maybe a few different people who could answer this next question. Um, maybe I'll start with you, Kevin, and then maybe scooch over to Ashley. But Haley asks, any advice or insight for recent graduates on what we can do to be proactive in starting our career in IT outside of just applying for this internship? Any suggestions, Kevin? <laughs> sure. Yeah. So it's it's been a minute since um, I was starting my career in IT. Um, sure. But um, you know, I, I think that uh, it's it's kind of a general quest because your career in IT, as we kind of alluded to, can mean so many different things these days. It's not that classic building a computer um, or fixing a computer. There's so many other things that go into IT these days. So I guess what I would encourage you first to do is is try to figure out where that discipline is that you feel like you have a best fit for in IT. Um, do you like the customer facing aspect of it? Do you like to be in front of people? Do you like to talk to people? Do you like to interact? Or do you like to, would you rather kind of like put your headphones and kind of, you know, just kind of crank away on building some things, but you're kind of doing it um, a, a bit on your own. And there's there's the, a wide variety of those different things that you can that you can do. So I'd encourage you to kind of figure out what you're passionate about. Um, and then once you understand that passion, then start to go out and look at where you can learn more about that. So I'll just take, for instance, if you're really passionate about project management of IT projects, go look at PMI.org, start to um, um, review um, articles and um, read up on what it means on how you do projects um, in, within IT. If you're really passionate about doing um, field tech services and you wanna be a technology specialist, um, Look at certifications for from Microsoft or from um, those areas that are out there that can help you understand more specifically how to do that. So, um, you know, I hate to say it, but Twitter, you know, find some folks out there that do some of the things that mm -hmm. you're interested in doing and follow them. I follow Elon Musk and it's amazing the type of things that he has out there that I learn about just by seeing what's going on in the industry. There's so much availability of data and information out there these days, it's almost overwhelming. So you kind of need to kind of figure out what you want and what you're passionate about and go from there. Right. No, that's a those are all great answers, Kevin, even despite having started your career many years ago. <laughs> I think something you said that's that I would have I was going to add to that is building relationships with people who have the skills that you want. So although we may not be able to build a relationship with Elon Musk personally, although maybe Kevin, you have, you know, you're pretty awesome. So it, it's possible that he knows you, but maybe it's developing a relationship with people who have skills that you want to learn through LinkedIn, through your teachers, asking your current professors or instructors, 
Where did they learn those skills? Hey, do you have any organizations you think I should join? Do you know anyone who's who's on the forefront of Google Analytics? Because I'm really interested in that or who's, you know, interested in the Adobe suite and, and all the creative media side that I'm interested in getting more into or into, you know, I'm speaking from more of my marketing experience. I know some software, C++ and Java. There's some things I know. <laughs> but anyone that you know in your life who taught you that information, where did they learn? Who do they know? That is what we call networking. And it sounds really kind of stuffy. I know people don't love the idea of networking, but networking is A, what gets you more jobs than applying to the job. And B, helps you create relationships that can teach you for the rest of your life without having to go back to school necessarily to learn a new skill. And following thought leaders and following you know, organizations that are taking strides in developing technology and reading, constantly reading, is such an important part about being a really great professional in this field. Um, so I think it's incumbent upon you all to take opportunities as they're available to you as a student, like doing an internship, but forever, you should, you know, acquire these practices, you know, like Kevin has mentioned. I'll also say that it's a really great opportunity to get connected locally. So if you're interested, for example, in entrepreneurship and the development of a startup app or something, we have several organizations that do work in that space, Idea Village and Propeller. We have an annual New Orleans Entrepreneur Week. Um, Gina Wink does some work in that area. If you just wanna understand the technology space in New Orleans, there's a lot of organizations that Oshner is partnered with that can give you information about what's technology look like here. And who else is in the technology space here? We're all connected. It's kind of like a big, small world, right? Everyone in technology knows everyone else in technology in New Orleans. <laughs> and this is a great place to do technology. So if you haven't explored joining some organizations, reading about the ways that New Orleans is doing a great job, and not just New Orleans, since, you know, Austin is everywhere. There are organizations in Lafayette, um, in Shreveport, any, and wherever you live, professional and sort of industry related organizations that can help you get connected to the right information. So I'll do that plug from a career coach perspective too. <laughs> any other suggestions from the panel on how to help prepare your application? Um, any sort of final words we wanna give our applicants as they're thinking about applying? Ashley, can I um, just just add a few thoughts there? Not not so far about the application, but about how do you start your career as a recent grad, regardless yeah. of here at Oshner. And I think Ashley um, said this before: is look at your brand. So make sure that LinkedIn page is is clean. Look at your resume. Make sure you're selling yourself on there. So you have as much information as possible, as much numbers as, as possible to talk about the scale or the depth of the things that you've done. If you don't have a lot of work experience, just talk about the skills that you've learned. Like I've learned communication skills or talent management or prioritization or any of those kind of competencies that we're looking for. Start to write your resume and stuff in those terms. And then the other thing is put yourself out there. So maybe you really want to stay here in, in this area and maybe you're open to doing something else. Um, and so I would apply for something that you seem qualified for and then just at least start to get some interviews. So see if you get the call. If you don't get the call, then there's something about your brand that isn't getting your resume or your application onto the let's get them a call, you know, pile. If you get the call but you and you get that first screen and you don't get the next interview, so you'll learn about kind of what you need to do and do differently maybe by just putting yourself out there but make sure that brand um, is, is representing you the best possible way. No, that's fantastic advice. I know as I, I say this all the time in my career coaching sessions, you know, you want to look forward at the value that you bring to a team, not just backwards at tasks you've accomplished backwards. That's in your words from your experience and your resume, especially should really be a reflection on how you could add value, what you've achieved and what that means for the skills you have and the opportunities to, to add value to the team you're going into. And it can be really confusing on how to make that happen, but all of your local career centers have career coaches who could help you with your resume. If you haven't applied yet and are interested in sort of thinking through how to adjust your resume to make it prepared for that. 
I got a question from Haley Griffin and Ashley Bankston. I think you are the best person to respond to this. Haley asked, will there be future job opportunities after the internship? And will we be able to apply in our respective fields? How should we go about applying for them? So maybe Kevin and Ashley both know, but Ashley, I know you can at least start for us. Absolutely. I feel like, you know, when you look at our website, you know, you can tell that we have a lot of positions posted and it's not only in IS, it's in each location. We have locations throughout Louisiana in Slide, Slidell and North Shore and in New Orleans and North Louisiana. So the opportunities I feel like are endless. You know, if you get this ter internship and, and staying here, if that's what you choose to do. Um, I think, you know, you can decide if you're still in school, we have part-time opportunities available. If you're graduating, absolutely. We have full-time positions available as well. Yeah, absolutely. And Justice, I was thinking, how did you get into your role? Was it something about did you tell someone you were interested in that and they sort of told you about the job or did you just apply? <laughs> so for the internship, it was actually two teachers of mine. Um, okay. I had been talking with about, you know, what I was going to do next after graduating and they actually put my name forward for the internship. Yeah. Um, for the actual full-time position, um, mm -hmm. you know, I thought pretty much the whole process of my internship, I was communicating with my supervisor that, look, I'm really looking for a full-time position if we can you know, keep an eye out for that as the internship kind of winds down. Um, and it just so happened that with a little bit of a, a change, one of our team members moved to another team. And so there was that position on the team that I've been interning for. And, you know, I was like, oh, so we have an opening. I'll take it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's really important. What you said is the whole internship, I was telling my mentor. <laughs> so from the beginning, you're you're getting your feet wet, but you're also saying, look, my intention is that I want to be here. I want to stay here. And look, healthcare may not end up being for everyone. It may not be the industry that, that gets you jazzed and excited in the morning. I mean, I think right now I can't imagine who wouldn't want to work in healthcare because of all of the incredible work that needs to be done and the impact we can have. But I think being able to be confident to say, yep, I want to be here. I want to tell you right now, and if you, even if you aren't sure, helping your mentor create opportunities for you to get exposure and, and get the connections you need to interact with different teams and leaders. I think that's great that you did that the whole time, Justice. That shows a lot of good drive and no wonder they hired you. <laughs> Kevin's over there going, oh yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just add just real quickly, just a little snippet to that. You know, I think it's, um, when there's a, 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 a combination of um, you like Oxford IT and Oxford IT likes you um, and there's a good fit there, we're, we're going to figure out how to keep you around. Um, right. You know, we're, we're very passionate about keeping good people. Uh, we're very passionate about having good people. Um, so if if you're a good person that has a good fit, I'm sorry, my dog found a squeaking toy right behind me at this moment that is making a lot like of it. <laughs> um, But we'll find, we'll, we'll find a home for you. So don't worry. I love that. Yeah, I think you said it. You said it so well, Kevin. You know, we we will find a home for you if you are aligned our mission, vision, and values. We won't turn away, right? We are in the business of of changing and saving lives. And if you are a patients first, teamwork oriented, you know, works with excellence and integrity person, you are meant to be here. So you can choose to leave, but we will keep you. If you're here, we're keeping you. Um, I think it's it's so great to meet someone at an internship level who just exudes everything we're looking for in a professional um, and comes, and plus you guys, you know, you're in the technology space. So you really can teach us things. You're probably on the forefront of a lot of things. We get stuck in our little tunnels of this is what we do and these are the apps I work with and you're the one learning the newest things. So come and teach us, come and help us continue to change and save lives. Now we have reached a really good stopping point. Our questions have gone down um, and we've heard from all of you wonderful panelists. I think this is a good place to stop. Students, if you wanna stay on and have any more questions, logistical questions about the internship or the application, Faye and I will both stay on through the end of the hour to be able to respond to those questions. But with that, 
thank you panelists. Thank you so much for all of your time. Students, I hope you hit send of a thank you in the chat before you head out. And we look forward to seeing all of your applications come through in the next few weeks. And as I said, if you have more questions, students, we'll be here for a few more minutes. If not, Faye and I will just chit chat with each other while we while we wait to hear anything from you. We saw lots of great chats come through. Um, lots of great questions. Emily, if you're still here. Hey, girl, got to do a little call out for you. <laughs> she was our master's in epidemiology student at Tulane. Um, so hopefully that helped you, Emily, to make your decision on if you should apply or not. Um, I haven't seen more questions come through, but Faye, what do you think about our candidates and about, about the IS internship? It's, it's, it's just a fabulous opportunity, especially, you know, you look at, you know, some students come to us and they don't think of healthcare as a career opportunity, right. but, you know, healthcare, the healthcare industry, the job growth is phenomenal and it continues to be. So I give students that opportunity to, you know, as the questions came in is what is, what is my next step after this internship? And we have that, we have that opportunity. And that's the great thing too, about the mentors that continue to, you know, sign up uh, to mentor these young professionals is they want to see them grow within this career. Uh, in the, in within this industry. So they're there to help and assist them to find that next step for them. Right, yeah, absolutely. I think, um, I think it's got to be the most important work right now is working in healthcare. Mm -hmm. That's at Oshner or somewhere else, you know, is, is up to you and what works for your life, right? Um, man, I'm thinking now maybe I should have become a biomedical engineer so I could have been helping in the cause, right, to help find the vaccine. And a few months ago, I thought, oh my gosh, why didn't I become a nurse, you know, <laughs> to work in that healthcare industry. Well, um, and, you know, Ashley, what you say in that, you know, some people, um, they still, they had that desire to, to, to help, right, and to be, a, they're a giving person. They want to be a part of this industry but don't want to do the front end. They don't want to do the clinical part. There's so many other opportunities. Even you and I in the background get to touch people's lives every day because we're the support team. We help, fit, you know, and, and Ashley Bankston that was with her, you know, she is, she fills those positions that are needed uh, yeah. to help the clinical staff to be able to provide that direct patient care. And, you know, I know you feel the way, the same way you and I had this conversation yesterday. I'm so fulfilled. One, that we're touching students' lives, we're, we're helping them develop their skills to, to, to yeah. decide on what career they want, they want. But also in the, in the, other, in the other, other area, we're able to add that support that, that the frontline staff is taking care of the patient. Right. right, no, you're absolutely right. It's incredibly fulfilling work, even working in HR, what you think. And I, I'm saying that now because Shannon Gallagher just asked, are there other internships ever available in other areas such as HR operations? Well, Shannon, you must have missed our event yesterday, which was all about the internships we have in HR and operations and other areas of the, house, the hospital system. So yes, definitely. There are two internship sort of pathways open right now. One just in the IS team, like we're talking about here today but Shannon also in basically every other corporate area. So if you go to Workday and I'll have Caitlin um, put the link to apply for, um, to apply for that kind of other pathway um, in the chat here in just a second, Shannon. But yes, we do have opportunities and internships in those other areas for sure, for sure. Um, and those are the other questions. I think Haley was gonna send one. She did. Um, I actually just responded. So she. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Yeah. If you're going on a vacation, um, didn't know if it's too much of an inconvenience, certainly up to each of your mentors, but that has to be the week they're off, right, Faye? Yes. That's the week that they, you were just already off, Haley. So um, that might actually work out really well. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. And yeah, for dropping 
And it's really, it's HR operations, supply chain, administration. It's multiple areas, guys. If you see the link that Caitlin has now listed in the chat, those are the other opportunities not related to IS that are also available. And it's just one link. It's, it's all encompassing for all the departments. And then as part of the application process, you'll get to, some of you will get to include, do a format, a survey to be able to kind of pick the areas that you're So great question. And even though the, the programs may seem different, it's still going to involve the uh, peer networking because the right. training will still be together. Uh, so, right. you know, it'll encompass all of the interns for both the IS and the Catalyst. Right. And I just have to call out my friend Jill Boatwright, who is on here. She may just be listening in, but she worked at a career center at Loyola, one of our university partners. She's making sure she just knows. I must. Oh, look, she just said in the chat. Hey, Jill. I know the name. <laughs> making sure she knows uh, what's going on to share with her students. And Jill, if you need any um, support, you need links to these, you want a flyer or something, just, I mean, reach out to Faye. I'm sure you have relationships with Faye. So or me, whichever, and we'll happily get that stuff for you, for your students. I think everything's posted on Handshake. If you're a career professional, a career center professional, the, the internship opportunities are posted on Handshake. Um, so you're able to get it that way. But if we can make you a flyer or something, let us know. We've had a ton of interest. We've had a lot of applications come through, which is fabulous. You know, you guys, we can stay connected if the internship isn't something that works out. If you're in graduate school, we do have fellowship opportunities as well. Um, so plenty of ways to get plugged into Oshner, plenty of ways. Let me see if there's well, this you one. Can you answer the last one as well? Yeah, go ahead. Graphics. Yeah, no worries, I'll jump in. Yeah. Um, so thank you for that question. That's a great, great question. So the programs are um, in alignment with our juniors, seniors, undergrad, as well as our uh, graduate students. Uh, we've had some questions that I think I answered directly. If someone is graduating this spring, could they still apply? Absolutely, absolutely. And 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 what and want to also add that if you are a graduating, um, you know, senior um, or graduate, um, a graduate student as well too, graduating, uh, please reach out. Um, to our HR, look at our careers page, because we have several opportunities, not just our internship opportunity, but um, for, our, for our master's students, we actually have a, an administrative fellowship program uh, that's available. We also, we have a career page uh, specifically for the fellowship, so you can go to that uh, and look at that to, to learn some more about that. But uh, we have lots of opportunities for students that are coming out of school as well, besides this internship program. Right, absolutely. All right, well, let's wrap this up, Faye. I actually need to go to my 12 o'clock meeting now anyway. So students, I hope this was helpful if you've, if you've bared with us through the last few minutes. Um, hopefully we got all of your answers to all of your questions. Um, we look forward to seeing all your applications and just really enjoyed our time together. So thank you so much, Faye. Thank you so much, Caitlin, and to our panelists who are now no longer with us on this event. Hope to see you all very soon. Thank you guys so much for all y'all's hard work. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.